In this lesson, we're going to get into some more advanced techniques with Tinkercad. We've already learned how to select and move shapes. We've learned how to use the camera controls to be able to look around the things that we're creating. Um, we've learned how to scale objects, to get specific dimensions, to make duplicates of things, and even to manipulate the work plane and move it around. So today's lesson, what we're really going to be looking at is when we have a combination of different shapes, how we can bring them into one group, as it's called in Tinkercad. And then we're also going to look at how we can turn shapes into holes in Tinkercad. It will actually make empty spaces where the shape would be. So let's have a look at how that gets done. This is the shape that we were left with on the last lesson when we were manipulating the work plane and moving it into lots of different places. Uh, however, this has serious, serious problems if we're going to use this for a 3D printer. All of these objects that are hanging above the surface like that, and I have it on every face here, this would be a problem for printing, which we're going to go over much more in depth in a later tutorial. Uh, but the basic premise is, is that we can't have objects or parts of our object that hang over the surface surface just like this does. So we're going to fix some of those by turning some of these shapes into holes. Okay. So let's start with this one, the sphere. We'll zoom into it a little bit. Let's pan our view so that we can see this a little bit better. I'm going to be using the left click and I'm going to have the object selected and I'm going to just merge it even further into the object here. Okay. So now I have it more fully merged in. And now I want you to notice when any shape is selected, we get a little dialog box up here that has the option as either solid or whole. And I'm going to select whole. Now you'll notice it becomes somewhat transparent right now, but we can still see the circle, the sphere as it is, as it sort of sticks out of the surface there. Um, but now we do have it as a whole, and I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to select the entire shape. And I'm going to select this right up here where it says group. When I click on this to group everything together, you'll notice that everything becomes the same color because now it is one solid group. And as we look at where the sphere was, now the sphere is no longer there. What is left is the negative of it or the whole. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to ungroup this so that I can go and do the same steps as I move this around. So I'm going to have a look at the cylinder. I'm going to uh, orbit down a little bit here. I'm going to left click and move that into the shape just a little bit further. Okay, we'll orbit around and have a look at what that did. Okay, now I'm going to go up and again, I don't want the solid. I'm going to select this as a whole. And let's do the same for this little love icon that I have on the side here. So let's zoom in a bit further. Let's select it. Let's move it and merge it into the surface just a little bit further and select it as a whole. So let's move it in to the surface. Orbit around and have a good look at that. Okay, decent. Let's select it as a whole. Okay, so now we have four holes along the outsides of it, uh, no longer solid shapes. I'm going to leave the roof as it is and the box as it is, and let's zoom out. Let's select everything, and then I'm going to go back up here and select this as a group. And the result as it comes back is much different than what we started with. We'll use our camera controls to look around and make sure that we don't have any problems. Now, one last thing about grouping the shapes. Once this is grouped and I select the entire thing, now I can scale and warp it as one solid group. It is no longer independent pieces, but it is one solid group. I can uniformly scale it if I select the shift button. We can scale it up or down to make it bigger or smaller. But when it's grouped, it takes all of those shapes in combination. So that's it for today's lesson. I would like you to go through, select the objects that you had along the faces of the cube that we added in, create them as holes, and group the entire object together. That's it. Thanks.